Um, so uh, let's go back to uh, the microeconomics, okay? Because you know sometimes you may get confused, right? Because yesterday we were in macroeconomics, but when we go back to uh, a higher level, we're still in microeconomics, okay? So yeah, try to tune up your channel go back to microeconomics okay and um, last week we just started uh, the first part of our uh, market structure and which is a uh, perfect competition yeah and we learn about the assumptions uh, of co uh, of perfect competition and we learn about the diagram for perfect competition so you see it not it is not just one diagram there are two diagrams together all together then it is describing perfect competition. Okay, yeah. And we learn something about the short run, right? The short run here, so yeah, so this diagram here is, is actually describing what will happen uh, to the perfectly uh, you know, competitive firms in the short run, okay? When they're trying to uh, make profit maximization, okay? And we know that there are three uh, possibilities that we can see uh, in the short run, okay, and um, yeah, we also talk about you know what is it going to be like in the short run when we talk about perfect competition. So we know that in the short run, uh, no one is able to enter the market, okay, and no one is able to exit the market completely, right? But you know, when when we are talking about uh, in 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 the assumption, we said it is free. To enter and exit, okay. So you know you you can you can kind of figure it out, right? In the short run, no one is able to enter and exit. So it should be, you know, in the long run, everyone can enter and exit the market, okay, which makes the assumption correct, okay. So yeah. So once again, in the short run, no one can enter and exit the market. So uh, and then we came to this part where uh, we talk about the shutdown price okay so you, you can see because you know because of the nature in the short run we have to make a decision uh, you know when we should not produce and when we should produce and if you still remember uh, we know that sometimes even when we are making a loss we still produce because because of what Anyone who can answer the question? Now, in the short run, yeah, sometimes we, we make loss. We even make loss in the short run, but we still produce. Power? Wait. Because you make a smaller loss if you produce? Yes. Okay, Kirsty. Yes. All right. Because you make a smaller loss if you produce. So I can actually summarize uh, you know, shutdown price in the short run. Okay, uh, by using the profit and the total revenue. So, uh, okay, so let me ask you. If we talk about the profit in the short run, okay, what is it going to be like uh, when we are still going to produce in terms of a profit? As long as the profit is or loss, or, or well, well, let's say now we are making a loss. As long as the loss is smaller than something, then we are going to keep producing. The loss is smaller than fixed cost. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As long as the loss is smaller than the fixed cost, then we are going to keep producing. Okay. Or on the other hand, we can use total revenue to explain this. Okay. As long as the total revenue is able to cover something then we will keep producing what is that something as long as the total revenue can cover something then we will keep producing variable cost yeah andre yeah 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 correct correct okay yeah good good well done guys okay so this is how we are going to interpret this Okay, so remember this, all right? We can we can look at it from profit, or we can look at it from the total revenue, all right? So as long as the profit, uh, you know, the loss is smaller than fixed cost, or the total revenue can cover the variable cost, then we will keep producing because 
the loss will be uh, smaller, okay, because we are going to be a uh, uh, loss, you know, minimization. We are going to be in uh, loss minimization, okay? So remember this, okay? Remember this drill, okay? All right. Yeah, so let's move on to the next part. So next part here, we are still going to talk about shutdown price, but, you know, treat it as an exercise, okay? So here, all right, we have done this. And so take a look at this, yeah? So you see Arnold right here, yeah? So he's trying to shut down the company, but he doesn't know when he should shut down the company, okay? So here in summary, you can see that, okay, shutdown price, okay? So it's where, when the total loss is equal to total fixed costs, right? So, so you just said that. And so we can conclude that the firms, they should shut down when the price falls below the shutdown price, okay? Because shutdown price uh, is basically here. When, uh, when you try to produce it, the loss is equal to the fixed cost. So it doesn't really matter if you produce or not, okay? Right? But if you try to produce it and the, and the loss is bigger than the shutdown pro, uh, than, the, than the shutdown loss which is the fix uh, which is the fixed cost then you should not produce anymore you should shut down the company okay you should shut down the company all right so here so yeah with that being said when the price falls below the shutdown price okay in the short run then you should not produce it anymore okay yeah so very quickly Okay, uh, here we have five uh, demand curves. Okay, so take a look at this. We have five demand curves. Okay, and well, let's assume all the costs, they remain constant. Okay, we are just moving the demand curve or you can say the price curve. Okay, yeah, so what will happen? So uh, uh, let's talk about P5. So when we are using, okay, yeah, yeah, and once again, so this gap here is, is, of course, is the average fixed cost because here is your average total cost and down here is your average uh, variable cost. So this gap here, you know, is average fixed cost. Okay, yeah. So for P5, when we are using the demand curve at P5, this one here, okay? So what is going to be the result for that firm? What is it? So when we are here, when we are trying to profit, uh, profit maximizing, uh, you know, in the company, and we are having a price of P five. So what is going to be the result? Are we going to uh, make a loss or are we going to make a profit? Are we going to make a draw? Economic profit. So how how do you find it? How do you know is economic profit from here? Can you um, quickly uh, explain, like, like how? How do we know if we are selling the product at P five in this market, we are going to earn an economic profit? So how can how can we uh, simply explain this? Because you see in the paper in, in paper three, sometimes you just have to explain it, okay, by writing some simple explanation uh, explanation on on your paper. So how do you explain this? How do you explain this? You know, why if we are at P five, we are earning an economic profit? Anyone? So ATC at Q5 is less than P5. Okay, so which is the AR, okay? Right? Because P5 is the price and it is also the AR, okay? The average revenue, right? So we are going to look at if we are using the profit maximization output, okay? Whether the AR is higher than the ATC 
so that we will get a profit, an economic profit. Okay, so Andrek, yeah, well done. So you can see here, uh, when we are trying to uh, profit maximizing uh, the output, so we look at AML, which is this line here also, when it intersects uh, with MC, so which is here, okay? So this is your profit maximization output, right? And when we are uh, producing the product at this level, so you will see this is your AR. And then when we look down at this output, the ATC is about P4, okay? About P4, high, a, a little bit higher than P4, okay? So P5 is more than that, you know, P4.1, I guess, yeah? So that's why we can conclude, okay? We are going to have an economic profit right here, this area, this area right here, this rectangle right here, okay? Yeah? Okay, all right. So what about P4? So if we have, okay, a price of P4, what will be the result? So take a look at this. Okay, so first of all, once again, look at the profit maximization output. Okay, MC is equal to MR. Okay, normal profit. Yeah, so rate, yeah, normal profit, that is correct. Uh, how do we see there is a normal profit? Can you quickly explain it? Yep. So you just have to use the same drill. So just try to quickly explain this. Okay, when ATC intersect with AMC. Okay, yeah, so that is good. That is good because think about this. AMC in this case is also your AR, right? Because is, is this curve here. Okay, it has so many rows. It is P, it is D, it is AR, it is, yeah, AMR as well. Okay, yeah. So when you think about this, when you think about this, this one here, okay, when AMR equals MC, that's your profit maximization. And at the same time, uh, you are going to see the AR, uh, which is P4, equals to the average cost at Q4, which is here. Okay? Yeah? And that's why we, we have the answer of normal uh, profit, because the average uh, revenue is equal to the average cost, okay, at this level, at Q4, all right? But we can also see one very uh, special, uh, you know, situation here, okay? When we are making a normal profit, okay, what will happen to the ATC? When we are making a normal profit, just like, it's just like this, what will happen to the ATC? So when when we take a look, yeah, the ATC will be the lowest, okay? Yep. And this is one very special uh, special thing that we can see in this diagram, okay? So try to remember this. Every time when you are making a normal profit, your ATC is always going to be at the lowest level, okay? Right. So even sometimes when 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 you don't have all the figures with you when you have some unknown figures, you can still figure out where your break-even price is because you know as long as I'm able to find the lowest average cost, then I will be able to know what my break-even price is. Is that clear? Yeah, because we know that it is always going to be like this. When we are making normal profit, the ATC is going to be the lowest point, okay? If you try to move the curve a little bit higher, then you cannot find it, okay? Because when you move it a little bit higher, the
the average uh, revenue is going to be higher than your average cost. Okay, and this is the only point. Okay, this is the only point where you will see uh, a normal uh, normal profit as well as the ATC at the lowest level. Okay, yeah, based on the nature of this uh, diagram. All right. Okay. So yeah, make sure you got that. All right, because it's so important. Sometimes you have to calculate. Uh, you know, like the break-even price, and they don't give you all the numbers. So you need to know this. Okay, if you know this, then you know what that number is, right? Based on the lowest uh, average cost. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on then. All right. So what about this? What about if we are using a demand curve at P3? Okay. What is going to be the result? Yeah, people who um, have an answer, you can yeah try it. Yeah, come on. So we have P three. What is going to be the result? Guys. Hi, are you are you still awake? Hi, hello, hello. A loss. Okay, thank you, Ray. Oh, thank you, Ray. Okay, yeah, a loss, and 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 once again, okay, yeah. So first of all, try to find the profit maximization uh, output. Okay, so here you have your ML, and you can find the MC here. So this output Q3 is your profit maximization. Okay, and at Q3. We are setting it at P3, okay? And you can see P3 is also your AR, your average revenue. So you can see your average revenue is actually lower than your average total cost, right? Because, yeah, because of this. So you're here, average revenue, and the average cost at this, uh, at this output is here, okay? So, yeah, so you're making a loss. You're making a loss, all right? Okay, yeah. But are we still going to uh, produce at this price? Why is that? Can cover the... Yes, Ray. Absolutely correct. We are able to cover the variable cost at this price. And that's why we are still going to produce. So take a look at this. Your average revenue, okay, is higher than the average variable cost at this level, okay. And based on what we have, what we have just discussed uh, using the table from the previous slide, okay, we know that as long as the revenue is higher than the variable cost, then we are going to keep producing, okay. So very good. So that is very good, okay. So, uh, well, with that being said, okay, so once again, when we go to P2, yeah, when we are using the price of P2, look at this. What do we call it? What do we call P2 when we look at this? Shutdown price. Yeah, exactly. Okay, because here, look at this. Shutdown price is when... Okay, the total loss is equal to total fixed cost. Or you can you can use another interpretation. Okay, when your total revenue, okay, well, well, when your revenue can barely cover all your variable costs. Okay, so you can see once again it is very similar to uh, what you can find from uh, the break even price. Okay, so at this price you are going to see a a shutdown price okay because look at this see see the intersection point okay that is where when your AR is equal to your AVC okay yeah does it make any sense all right 
And because of that, because of that, your revenue is only able to cover the average uh, variable cost. Okay? Barely. Right? So if that's the case, so you can see your loss at this point. Okay? So this is your AR. And you can barely cover all your average variable cost. So your loss will be this distance here. This distance here. And this distance here, that's your average fixed cost. Okay? Yeah? And if you do the you know, uh, multiplication, and then you will see that is your fixed cost. Okay? Your total fixed cost. Okay? So, yeah. Yeah, with that being said, okay, it proves that this is correct. Okay? Yeah? Okay? Yeah? And at the same time, you can see when we are in the shutdown price, based on the diagram, you can see the AVC is at the lowest level. Okay? Because now we are in the intersection point uh, between AVC and MC. Alright? So we have one more idea that just come up. Okay? Is when you are in the shutdown price, okay? When you are in the shutdown price level, the AVC is going to be at the lowest level. Is this clear? Uh, clear? Clear? Okay? Yeah? Understandable? Alright, so we have two uh, very special uh, things that, you know, we just found out, okay? is when you are having a break-even price, the ATC is also going to be at the lowest point. And when you are in a shutdown price, the AVC is also at the lowest level, okay? So make sure you got that, alright, okay, okay? Okay, all right, that is good. And well, of course, P1. So if the price is even lower, then you know you have to shut down. You have to shut it down. Okay, shut it down. All right, yeah, because you should shut down when the price fall. Okay, falls even either below than the shutdown price. Okay, so there's there's no need for you to produce the products uh, anymore because you know you will be better off if you do not produce. Okay. If you just shut down your production, okay, yeah, right, okay, yeah, because you, you you see here, right now your average revenue cannot even cover your average cost, variable cost. I'm talking about, okay, yeah, here, right, and that's why you are going to shut it down, all right. So with that being said, just like this, okay, P five, right, when the AR is higher than ATC, then yeah. You have your economic profit, and then when the AR equals uh, uh, ATC, then you have normal profit. Okay, and then you will see at P three, right? The AR is lower than the ATC, but it's still higher than AVC. So yeah, the the revenue is still able to cover the variable costs. So we are still going to produce because we are going to be better off if we produce instead of. Uh, shutting down uh, the production, okay. And once again, at P two, P two here, you will see the average revenue can barely cover uh, the variable cost. Okay, so that is your shutdown price. Okay, and P one once again, the price even you know the average revenue is even lower than the average rev uh, uh, variable cost. So it, if that's the case, then we are not going to produce because, yeah, the loss will be less if we do not produce. Okay, yeah, so we will shut it down. Okay, all right. All right, okay, so let's do an exercise right now. Okay, so uh, this exercise uh, right here, uh, you have question five and six. Uh, you can actually finish both of them at the same time. All right. So uh, the question here is very simple. So when you look at the figures uh, A, B, C, then uh, you try to uh, give me the answer. If they should continue 
uh, producing or if they should shut it down. Okay, and then you prove why they should keep continue uh, con continuing on uh, the production or why they should uh, shut down. Okay, the production, right? So you are going to show me how much uh, of the uh, economic profit they have gained in any of the case or how much loss they have made in any of the case. Okay, yeah, to prove why they should continue, why they should uh, shut down. Okay, yeah, so now I'm going to give you uh, five minutes to finish this. So if you have finished this, uh, please tell me, okay, in the chat box. So if you have any questions, please ask, okay? Yeah, because it's going to be um, getting more complicated in the later part of this chapter. Oh, Ian, that's quick. Okay, that's good. So we're just going to wait for um, one or two more minutes and we will go through the answer. Okay, good job, right? Right, good, 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 good. Okay. 30 more seconds, yep, 
cool. Okay. Good. All right, so uh, let's go to um, the answer. Okay, uh, so for uh, question A, uh, should they keep producing? For question A, yep, yeah. uh, why? Are they making, uh, econo yeah, economic profit? Uh, how much economic profit per unit? How much economic profit per unit? One per unit. That's good. So, uh, if you talk about total profit, what is the uh? Yep, Cheryl. Thank you. Two hundred dollars of the total profit. So that is good, and that's why you see when they are making a profit, they should keep producing. Of course. Uh, what about B? Should they shut down the company for B? Yes. Why? Kirsty, <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, Ian. Yeah, Ian is is correct. Yeah, Ian is correct. Yeah. So, um, right. Uh, so you can see they are making a loss. Uh, by how much? Uh, per unit. Per unit. Per unit. Yeah, two per unit. Okay, two per unit. Uh, in terms of total loss. What is it? Total loss. 500. Okay, 500. So you can see here, 500 total loss, okay, if they produce. But think about the total fixed cost. What is the total fi fixed cost in, in, in question B? Yeah, take a look at this. $750. Okay, and if you do not produce, if you shut down, you will have to pay seven hundred fifty dollars, and if you produce, you only lost five hundred dollars. Okay, so of course you are going to keep producing, right? Because you lose less if you produce. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So that's B. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And what about C? Should they shut down the company? For question C. No, why not? Normal profit. Okay, yeah. Normal profit. That's all. Okay. So that is good. All right. That is good. So uh, very quickly, I'm going to um, show you. Okay. Um, what I just wrote. Um, yeah. And here, let me try to um, connect to another screen. Yep, here. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, you have the same answer as what I have here. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, you can you know, do your cap screen. Okay. If you want a reference, right? So, this right here. So, you have. The answers okay so none of them should shut down the company okay because this one a is earning a profit and for B well is is, 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 is having a loss but is able to cover uh, all variable costs okay so that is cool to keep producing okay and for C normal profit yeah what else? yeah is what more do you expect normal profit is also good okay so that's that's it okay Right, so okay. Any questions? All right, so let's go to the next question. So let's try this question here. Okay, let's see if you can finish this. I'll give you, yeah, five minutes also. Try to finish this, try to find. The shutdown price, okay, and break even price in the short run by using 
the data provided below. Any difficulties? So anyone finished it? Okay, that's good. That's good. So uh, 30 more seconds and we will go through the answer.
Okay. All right. Um. So, can you tell me what what is the shutdown price? Shutdown price. Free. Um. Yeah. Can you make it more? Wait. Can you make it more accurate? Two point eight. Two point eight is the correct answer. Okay. Anyone, anyone who got confused, is two point eight. Okay. So well, well, Ray, if if you got that correctly, then well, let me ask you one more. So, uh, what will be the break-even price? Wait, ten. Ten? Seriously? Are you sure? Come on, go back to the yeah, go back to the calculation and think about this. Okay, you guys need to find something very essential. Okay, where is the lowest level? Okay, right, three point five. Okay. That is good, all right. So, well, uh, in case you cannot uh, calculate this, uh, these two numbers, so let me just quickly uh, show you how it's done uh, using right, right here. Okay, I just got my um, writing done here. Okay, so take a look at this, right? Um, so when we are looking at um, the break-even price, okay, so we know that so something very special will happen when we are reaching uh, the break-even price. So that is where uh, our break-even, okay, uh, no, sorry, our average revenue is going to be at the lowest level, okay? So we just have to find out which one, which number, which average uh, variable cost at a particular quantity will give us the lowest average uh, variable cost, okay? So here is the calculation if you need to cap screen it okay do it all right so if we do the simple calculation right so take a look at this so you're using a total variable cost variable cost uh, use it to divide by the quantity then you will get average variable cost right okay so when you look at this you know this series of number okay so you, you just have to repeat the same thing over and over again Okay, so you are going to find out this one here. Okay, well, let me use um, another color for this. Uh, well, you will see this one here at quantity 5. Okay, you have the lowest average variable cost. And that's why that is your break-even price. And the same logic goes to uh, 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 the normal profit, okay? And which is your break even? Well, well, sorry. Uh, here above, that is that is your uh, shutdown price. Yeah, I also got myself confused. <laughs> uh, shutdown price, okay? Yeah. And when you are looking at the break even price, then you know that in normal profit, we are going to earn. Uh, you see nothing, no profit. But at the same time, you will see something very special. The special, uh, the pe uh, special thing is, you will see the total, the average total cost is at the lowest level. Okay, yeah. So you just have to do the same thing using the total cost. Okay, use it to divide by the quantity. Okay, so ten divided by one okay for the quantity of one and then you do it yeah multiple times and you will find out this one here okay at quantity of six okay you are going to get the lowest uh average total cost so that is oh let me point it right next to it that is your break even price okay yep right so that's why you guys got it okay correctly so for the shutdown price 
2.8. For the break-even price, 3.5. Okay, any questions? Okay, oh, that's great. All right, let's go back to um, the chapter. All right, yeah, so we just finished yeah, the exercise here. Uh, yeah, so now we, yeah, I think we know. I think we know what shutdown price is in the short run, okay? So we have finished everything in the short run. So we can now move on to the long run. So in the long run, take a look at this. So we know that in the short run, no new firms can enter into the market, into the perfect competition, okay? And no firms, no existing firms can exit the market completely, okay? So in the long run, well, well we just said that uh, in the beginning of the class. See, in the long run, they can now enter the market and people, if they want to exit the market, they can exit the market, okay? Yeah? Um, here's the question. If, if you are having this situation in the long run, and think about this, if, if the firms in the market, they were earning economic profit in the short run, what will happen to the market? What will happen to the market? What do you think? What will happen to the market? If, people, they, if the people they, they see, okay, the firms, they are actually earning economic profit. So if you are some potential investor, what would you do? Hmm, get get larger. Well, but but here, well here, I'm uh, just asking if you are some potential uh, investors. So, oh, get larger the market, right? Okay, yeah, because you see here, because when when the people out there they see. Um, the market is getting larger. Okay. Well, not not well. Well, when well well, let me do it again. So when you guys are earning economic profits, okay. So it means it's attractive. So more potential investors they would love to join in the market. Okay. So you will see in the long run if that is the case. If that is the case. If they see. The people in this market, they are earning economic profit, then they are going to attract more producers into the market. Okay, so with that being said, well, let's use this to sum up this concept here. Okay, so basically, the, the early bird gets the worm. Okay, well, you will soon understand why the early bird gets the worm. Okay, right. So, take a look at this. So here, yeah, we said that, okay, more and more firms, they will be attracted to open businesses in the market because they see profits. So they want to earn some of those as well. Okay, so they see there are worms in that market. So they are the birds. They are trying to, you know, fly over there and eat those worms. Okay, but the question, one more question is, what will happen to the market uh, demand and supply? What will happen to that? Yeah, anything that will be affected because of this? Yeah, Andrik, yeah, that's correct. Okay, right? Because you see, when you are attracting more people in the market, of course, there, there, there's going to be more supply. So your market, there will be more supply. Okay, if that is the case, so before we go to the diagram, take a look at this once again. The early bird gets the worm. Okay, so let's go to, um, well, oops. Okay, let's go to, yeah, I think I pre drew this diagram here. Yeah, okay, so once again, here you will see the short run uh, uh, perfect competition diagram. And uh, because now the question uh, is asking, uh, in the short run, they were earning an economic profit. Okay, so now let's change it. Let's change it to um, to long run. So this, so let's use uh, the color of blue. 
to represent uh, short run, and then we'll use uh, the color color of red to represent uh, the long run. Okay, yeah. So yeah, because of the long run, they see in this market people are earning economic profit. So more and more investors they got attracted into the market. So just like what Andrew said, the supply will be increased in the market. Okay, so let's put a line here. Okay. So now we are talking about long run. Okay, long run here. Okay, so let's call that S1. Okay, so what what are you going to expect after many and many uh, firms they are attracted into this market? What are you going to expect as a firm in that market? What do you think? Mm. Uh yeah, you you could say that. Okay, you could say that. But there is a more uh, important thing you can see from there. When the market supply is increasing. And if you are an individual firm, okay, what what do we call ourselves uh if we are in the perfect competition? price taker okay yes okay right correct so we are going to take a new price which is here okay because now more and more uh, investors they got attracted uh, into this market and that's why we have to take a lower price and if you imagine if you take a lower price right and if your costs they remain the same what will happen to your company What will happen to the profit of your company? Decrease. Yeah. Yeah. Smaller. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So this is what you are going to expect. And that's why the early bird gets the worm. Yeah. So now you get it. Because, you know, when you are attracting more birds, okay, to eat the worms with you, right? So there'll be less worms. Okay. And at the end, right, you know, all the profits will be shared by different uh, investors, well, uh, different firms in the market. Okay, right? But see, here is the question. The supply is increasing, but when will it stop? To which point the supply will stop increasing? Think about this. So why would they come into the market? Yeah, Andrik, that's right, that's right, okay? Yeah, so the increase in supply will stop when the price reach normal profit. Because after that, so many outsiders, they will see, oh, okay, yeah, because now, if, if I enter the market, I can only earn normal profit. So it doesn't look that attractive to me anymore. So I'm not going to get in to the market, okay? So, yeah, so that's the case. So in the long run, if you were earning economic profit in the short run, it will go back to normal profit. So that is long run. Okay, that is the adjust, uh, uh, adjustment of long run. So uh, every time when we are drawing a long run, uh, you know, sub, uh, wait, diagram, we just have to go from here. Yeah, well, we are going to go from uh, the firm diagram to 
the market diagram because that is easier for us to uh, to make it right. Okay, so here let's draw. Uh, let's say D one. Okay, yeah. See, you you can see why I I started from uh, the firm diagram because from there, well, let's cancel this one out first. Because if I, if I started from uh, the firm diagram, it's easier for me to draw the market diagram. So now, now I know this point here, that is where I should draw my supply curve, the new supply curve. Okay, so S1. Okay, yeah, so yeah, every time when you are drawing a uh, perfect competition in the long run, go from the firm diagram, yeah, and all the way, so it's like a reverse, okay, all the way go back to um, the market diagram. So that's how you get it. So here, if, if we do that, so think about this so MC equals ML, that is your profit maximization point, that is here. That's a Q2. Okay. And right here in the market, you have P2, Q2. So think about this. In the market, you will see the quantity is increasing because now you have more producers, you have more firms selling the product. So that makes sense. Okay, but if you think about in the individual uh, firms, they are going to produce less because now more firms they are sharing the output with them. Okay, so this makes total sense. Okay, and the price you will see is getting lower, so they are earning a normal profit now. So if at at P two, they are earning a normal profit. Okay, so that's long run. Okay, so that's the long run. All right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you will have another scenario when you uh, were having loss, and in the long run, something will happen, and then you will be adjusted. Okay. So, uh, that's all for today. All right. Uh, well, no homework for HL this week. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, take it easy. And when we come back next week, we will go to the next scenario. Okay. And we will try to finish a uh, perfect competition next week. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. All right. Okay. Bye bye.